Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Vardy. I'm here with a quick instructional video um, going over the Threshold Concepts case study assignment. So let's just dive right in. I'm already here in our Canvas site, and I'm just going to go right down here to the Threshold Concept case study number one. And as you can see, and as we talked about in this week's instructor video, this is a graded discussion, meaning that this is how you'll turn it in, is by uploading your file with your draft of your case study to this discussion thread and getting and giving peer review feedback on the draft of your case study. So a little bit of the background, right? We've been talking about from Stephen Lynn and others that there is a bit of a tension, it's a dynamic tension between the theoretical and the applied within rhetoric and composition. And here this week, we are exploring theoretical grounding, some methodologies and key ideas in the field, and now we're gonna apply what we learn. So we are gonna use these case studies to help us operationalize the threshold concepts that we read about we're going to be analyzing texts from the real world and you know that's a silly overly simplified way to say um, i'm not assigning you the text that you're going to analyze in these case studies what i want you to do is when you're thinking about the threshold concept readings i want you to go out and find a text that exemplifies the threshold concept that you want to talk about so what you want to do is find a text in the wild. See, there I go again with the cliche descriptions. But you want to go online or in your own reading collection or from texts that you use in your everyday life. And then you want to make a claim about how this text that you find is evidence of one of the threshold concepts that we talk about. So you know this week we're talking about genre and process, and then within that there are several sort of subsections where you can get a little more specific. You may pick a subsection of the broader concept to really drill down into, and I think that actually might even be an easier way to go about it. The text you find can be digital, it can be a blog post, social media, an article, it can be a print text, it can be physical, it can be handwritten, it can be more professionally produced, it can be multimodal. The world's your oyster. Just think about a text that would be a good example of a threshold concept in action. So then for the assignment, you're gonna write up this brief case study. You're gonna say what the text is maybe briefly outline the rhetorical situation. Who's it for? What's the purpose? Who's the rhetor here? And then you're gonna discuss a key aspect of one of the threshold concepts. So definitely you're going to consider the situation in which the text was generated, how it responds to that rhetorical situation. Sorry, it says report here. I'll go in and change that. Um, you might not be looking at a report. You might be looking at an Instagram post or something else. But either way, you want to support your claim about this threshold concept by both pointing to specific details in the text. That's where the analysis comes in. You're kind of breaking apart and looking at its components. And then you also want to pull in evidence from this text, naming what we know. And then once you've drafted your case study, it doesn't have to be super long, two to three pages, then you're gonna post it to the peer review discussion board below for this assignment. You'll take time to read two to three of your classmates' drafts of their case studies, and you're gonna give them feedback according to the peer review mini lesson video that is posted in this week's overview, okay? So I want you to be giving supportive and productive feedback. Sorry, clicking all over the place here. I want you to be giving supportive and productive feedback that hits higher order concerns, middle order concerns, lower order concerns, and poses one question. 
So make sure that that's a part. You can see that here in our minimum requirements. So your case study needs to be drafted, posted to the peer review discussion board. You should include at least one quotation from both your chosen text and naming what we know. And you definitely want to support your arguments with rele relevant details um, from your analysis. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys an example of one of the texts that you could talk about and just talk really briefly through how you might highlight some of these aspects. Okay, so first of all, I am going to pull up Masterclass, which is not a thing that I ever would have chosen for myself, but I'm kind of loving it. My sister-in-law got me and my husband a subscription for Christmas and, um, you know, I'm, I'm going deep now. Learning. It's amazing. Um, but so here I've pulled up the masterclass from Alice Waters, who is the grandmother of the farm to table cooking movement. And in each of these videos, it's fascinating to me to see how this master chef who is not, she's not a TV personality. So she's moving through the motions of this new discipline and new context in a way that I find kind of refreshing because <laughs> she's obviously not super used to having to like hit camera angles, but she is used to talking about what her expertise is. Now, I'm not gonna use a clip from the video, but more look at a piece of writing. In this section of this video, she's talking about a recipe for quick pickles. And let's see if I can get the, okay. So then she produces, or the masterclass produces the recipe here on the screen. So this is both something I probably could talk about in terms of a multimodal piece, but the thing that I think is so interesting about this in particular is that for me, this really highlights within the threshold concept of genre, how writing is performative. And in specific, I'm thinking about, I'm looking on page 44 of the book, and um, here Andrea Lunsford is talking about how writing does things, right? She quotes J.L. Austin, that, who writes about, you know, how writing literally performs things or even spoken performances of like, I now pronounce you man and wife. Um, I name this ship the Enterprise, those, those sorts of things. But then she goes on in the next paragraph to say, at its most basic, saying that writing is performative means that writing acts that writing can make things happen. And she gives some other examples here, but I thought this recipe, while at once being, yes, a multimodal text that is read as well as viewed, as well as you know heard, she kind of talks through the ingredients. That would have been my second choice if I was gonna write two threshold concept case studies, I might've done that, but hear me out. So I'm going to do my quick analysis. First of all, you know, I already told you what, what genre this is. It's a master class video. Um, Alice Waters here is the Retor, but also sort of a sponsor of this is the master class organization. Um, but Alice Waters is the author of this recipe, right? And this recipe is intended to make something happen. Yes? So we see the title of the recipe here at the top. We see all of the ingredients listed. Um, usually ingredients are listed in order that you're gonna actually use them. And so that's a little bit of inside knowledge that I know about recipes is that you, put, you write them down in the order that they need to be combined. Um, now, that's really interesting because as a viewer of this, I have more knowledge. So if we're going to think about the rhetorical situation, Alice Waters doesn't know the level of cooking knowledge that her audience has. And she doesn't explain that when she sets up this recipe. She just sort of plops it up here. Um, so that's an interesting 
dynamic between the rhetor and her purpose and her audience, which in this case is me, but of course we know Masterclass is something that's advertised broadly and is intended to have a very wide reaching audience at all levels of expertise. So there's my little rhetorical analysis. Now, as I'm looking at the recipe, I am seeing how it is intended to perform an action because it tells you the ingredients. And then in the next few frames, it's going to, there's Alice Waters and her daughter. <laughs> She's going to actually make the brine for the recipe that was just here, right? And so the recipe itself is giving us the ingredients and it's uh, oftentimes going to be followed by instructions. And in this case, the instructions are not written. They're gonna be demonstrative, performative in another way. But in that sense, Alice Waters is gonna actually be performing the act that this recipe is intended to prompt. So, that's kind of just like a quick and dirty example of what you're going to want to do in your threshold concept case studies. You'll find a genre in the wild. I've been semi-obsessed with this masterclass thing lately, so <laughs> that's where my mind first went. But then you're going to be writing up approximately two to three pages where you're going to be introducing what the genre is, how it's responding to the rhetorical situation, identify those elements, who's the author or the rhetor, what's the purpose or the message, who's the audience, how well is this text responding to it, and how specifically is this text demonstrating one of the threshold concepts from this week's readings. Okay, if you have any questions about this threshold concept case study assignment, please feel free to shoot me an email and be happy to talk more with you then. Bye everybody.